Hello and welcome to this introduction to Hawaii Kia 4. Now this was meant to be quite a modest update, but as it turns out it's probably our most exciting release to date with a huge number of new features that are pretty much unique to any Kia anywhere and a lot of overall enhancements. So let's dive in and have a look at what we've got here. The most exciting thing about Hawaii Kia 4 is that we're not talking about just one Kia, we're talking about two Kias in one. And you'll see that over in the controls here, we've got a primary and a secondary. So that's two Kias that we can combine in any number of different ways for some incredible results. So I've got this shot here from the open source movie Tears of Steel, and this is what the green screen looks like. And if I switch to analysis mode, you'll see that the new automatic option has given us a pretty good result right off the bat. What auto is doing is it's intelligently analyzing the entire image and giving you the best possible starting point for pulling the mat. So all we need to do is increase the density till we clear the screen. And that's great. But supposing we wanted to finesse the hair just a little bit more. Well, we can do that by turning on secondary. And you'll see that that brings up this mask that affects the hair separately. And if I play through, you'll see that that mask is actually tracking that area in real time. And I can set up a completely different key for his hair that gives us a little bit more transparency, a little bit smoother result. And I think it's fair to say that any green or blue screen, no matter how well it's been shot, can always benefit from splitting the key up into component parts. And that's where secondary can be so useful and powerful. But I think you'll also agree that that mask tracking is seriously nifty. So let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. So we've got a shot here of a man running into frame. And as you can see, the screen is pretty unevenly lit. So if we go to analysis, you'll see that we need to take care of these sides. But we also probably want to keep this ground shadow and we will be able to do that with secondary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the level control in primary to flatten off the screen. So you'll notice as I do that, the backing becomes a lot more even. So it's a simple matter of grabbing density to clear it completely. But it started to eat away at his ground shadow here. So if we turn on secondary, you'll see that I've now got a key that's much more suitable for the figure itself. And if we look at this on the run, you'll see how incredibly well the tracker picks up the moving figure and it all happens in real time without my having to keyframe it or pre-render the track or perform any other kind of setup. I'd just like to look at one more example. A lot of you will be familiar with this shot from Hollywood camera work. And again, let's just use level to even off the background, a little bit of density to clear those corners, and a little bit of foreground fill. Now, I'd like to treat her hair separately, so I'm going to turn on secondary. So I've set up the track area with these red markers here. So we're just basically following her head. And inside the secondary, I've just softened off the key on her hair, so we're getting a little bit more detail in there. So if we look at how that works, even when she flicks her head, the track locks on really nicely, and we're getting a much better result from using the two keys in one. So while we're on this shot, I'd just like to point out that both the primary and secondary also feature a manual color picker mode. You'll see that both have this auto switch and that's the default setup. I've reset the controls to the defaults just to show you how this works. So if I turn off the auto switch, you'll see that it enables this color swatch and I click on that and it brings up the color picker. I switch to source mode and I'm going to pick what I know to be the darkest corner of the screen down there. Then if we come out of source, you can see that we've actually cleared the backing quite nicely. And of course, we can do the exact same thing with secondary. If I turn that on, disable auto, click on the color swatch, click on the color picker, click on what I know to be the darkest area inside this mask. And you see that we've actually got a pretty good result with those picks. Won't work for everything, but it's very handy to know it's there. 
And just before we move on from the main Kia controls, I'd like to point out the new advanced switch here. So if I enable that, it brings up a whole range of additional advanced controls, both for primary and secondary. And these can really help out for problem shots. Moving on down to the despill section, we've added a new option to use the background to help with the despill operation. In order to get this to work, obviously we need to populate the background source well here. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on my background clip here, apply clip. And then if I turn on use background, I think you'll see how that helps to sit the shot much more successfully into the background. If we zoom right in, you'll see that we can use this depth slider to adjust the depth of that operation. And of course, all the usual despill parameters are still in play. And if we switch to the use background view, you can get a better idea of what's going on. If I adjust the amount slider, you can see how those colors are being used to assist with the despill. Now let's take a look at the new edge tools section. So let's open that up. And there are two new features in here, one of which is edge replace and the other is background match. Now you'll notice that there's a bright edge to the right hand side of her hair here. And that's something we can very easily now fix with edge replace. So if I turn that on, you'll notice the immediate improvement that that makes. So that's off and that's on. And you'll see that that's taking care of those edge pixels. And it's doing that by synthesizing new pixels based on the rest of the foreground. So anytime you're facing a situation where the edge pixels aren't looking quite the way you like them to, then edge replace is a good tool to try. And if we come over to the other side of the image here, I just want to show you background match. Now to use this, you'll need to have populated that background source well, just as you did with the despill background. So let's turn that on and see what happens here. So there we are, there's it on and there's it off. And I think you can see that what it's doing is it's making a much nicer transition between the background and the foreground. So what it's doing is it's matching the luminance of the foreground pixels to the luminance of the background. So darkening where the background is darker and brightening where it's lighter, but obviously only just along the edge. And the result is a composite that looks a lot more photorealistic. Now, if you're a user of Hawaii Kia 3, you'll notice that we've moved a few of the edge tools out of the main Kia module, and we've added a new module called Hawaii Edge Tools. So let's apply that. So this is being applied in addition to the main Kia module. And you'll see that we have our edge brightness, saturation, and so on, all those tools that you'll be familiar with. We've also duplicated edge replace and background match and light wrap. All three are available in the primary Kia module, but we've also got a brand new option here called fine edge. Now this is a lot more complex than I can go into in this short introduction, but what it allows us to do is to manipulate the compositing operation in some really interesting ways. So if I just turn that on, you can see that I can adjust the values of the transparent pixels, either making them brighter or darker, as in this case. So this is a very interesting, unique feature that it's well worth having a play with. And finally, I'd like to give a mention to the amazing new Hawaii Slice module. So let's add that to our source clip. And that gives us an incredibly detailed and powerful line-by-line -line analysis tool that really lets us hone in on the precise values within our image. And obviously this is going to be extremely useful for keying purposes, but it's also an analysis tool that you can use on any material. And there's pretty much nothing else as powerful and as versatile. So there you go. That's an overview of everything that's new in Hawaii Kia 4. We'll be producing videos that show precisely how to use all these new features, but I hope that's been enough to whet your appetite. Hawaii Kia is available through Effects Factory, so that means you can download a free trial version and check it out for yourself right now. Thanks for watching.